Here in the studio are political insiders, Tony May for the Democrats, Charlie Giroux for the Republicans. Guys, thanks for being here. We'll start with uh, a topic that's close to Charlie's heart, uh, gun laws. And we've been talking about this, um, whether to um, loss, these lawsuits are, are building over gun laws, and Harrisburg is one of them. The lawsuits are building because the legislature finally granted what is called legal standing for entities to bring these lawsuits. These local ordinances, Tanya, are illegal purely and simply. They simply haven't yet been able to be challenged because the courts have said private parties don't have standing to bring these suits. They do now, they're going to be found to be illegal, and they're going to be repudiated. I think so. the only problem that, that Charlie and I have, since I love lawyers, I think that they're never against lawsuits, but on the other hand, this state law would allow or require local governments to pay the legal costs, so it's a freebie for any special interest group to come and sue to abolish local... If they're successful. If they're successful, And that's the way it should be, Tony. These local municipalities shouldn't have these laws on the book in the first place. They have the opportunity to remove them on their own motion. If they don't, they run the risk of being Some sued. Some of these laws make good happen. sense, so Tony, Tony yeah, the they don't... They, police say they need them. They don't make good sense. I mean, ultimately, they don't work. Let me say this, simply and purely. The best defense against bad guys with guns are good people with guns. All right. Well, we'll let, that, let that stand on its own weak merits. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, there's a lot of more We're things to talk emails about. on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk a little bit about minimum wage. Uh, the governor coming out today talking about he's uh, in favor of increasing it, eventually up to $10.10 $10 an hour. Charlie, I'll let you fight that one. Um, well, he I mean, says it'll stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. and well, he says a lot of things will stimulate the economy, which clearly won't. The problem here is the doctrine of unintended consequences. And some of these folks who frankly have good motives and have compassion in their hearts believe that somehow government mandating what people will be paid works to their advantage. But it clearly doesn't. History has shown that it has caused unemployment, particularly against the underprivileged and the poor, specifically the people that these laws are designed to help. And the problem is when you say we're going to raise it to here, eventually it's going to be to here and to here and to here and to here. Mm -hmm. And the question becomes, why not $20 an hour? If it's a good idea to raise it to make any quote-unquote living wage, why not raise it to the, right, to the right level? And nobody says we can afford that. Uh, and Tony, so yeah. some people argue that the minimum wage is not, wasn't intended to be the living wage. No, but I think that Charlie has forgotten that just last week, another York County politician, Senator Scott Wagner, a well-known conservative, beat the governor to the punch and called for an increase in the minimum wage. The difference is how much should you increase it? Scott Wagner says eight seventy-five an hour or nine dollars an hour. The governor says ten ten. Some people say fifteen dollars. So I mean, I think the real argument is over how much should we increase the minimum wage? We've already established the idea that a minimum wage is necessary at seven and a quarter an hour right now. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what should a fair amount be? Is it is it eight seventy-five? Is it nine? Is it ten ten? Well, let's discuss what Rob just asked about uh, the argument that some people say the minimum wage is not supposed to be that living wage. It's not. It's supposed to be an entry-level wage. It's supposed to be the first rung on the economic ladder so that people can climb up from that wage. And Thomas Sowell, the African-American economist noted uh, for his scholarship in this particular area, has talked at great length about the fact that it hurts the poor and that when we began the minimum wage in this country, we had unemployment at under 2%. Look what it is among black youth today. All right, we're I know Charlie there. doesn't read the New York Times, but over half the people who are still working for minimum wage are over the age of 30. All right, we're up out of time. We'll leave it right there. Thanks, guys. You can catch our political insiders every Tuesday at 530 right here on CBS 21 News. And join us Sunday mornings at 1130 for CBS 21's Face the State right after CBS's Face the Nation.